Thank you very much. Um, so in answer to the question, is this, a, is this about the STP, is this about sustainability and transformation? Well, yes it is, because I, I, I don't think there's anything else worth talking about, because I, I've been a GP in Home Bay now for 25 years, or I'm in my 25th year at least, um, and I believe as passionately in the National Health Service as anybody else does. And uh, for me, the sustainability of the NHS is important, so how can we sustain it given all of the all, all of the constraints that we hear so regularly in the papers, so regularly on television, so regularly from our politicians? How can we sustain a national health service? And does that mean transforming the way that services are delivered so that we can still deliver care that is free at the point of need? Um, and, and I passionately believe in that. Well, people may think that I'm poacher turned gamekeeper, but I. I believe passionately in that. So what we want to talk about is, is, is what the challenges are, why things do need to change, um, and what the constraints are that are around. And I'm going to be fairly, fairly rapid through this because most people will have heard this before, but our population is growing, so almost another 500,000 people in the next 15 years in Kent and Medway. More people living longer which is good, they tend to live longer than with long-term conditions, the diabetes, your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, your heart disease, uh, surviving from cancer. You know, great news, more people surviving from cancer, and so cancer survival has almost become a long-term condition. Who would have thought that 20, 20 years ago? Um, one in four people in Kent and Medway have got a mental health problem, so they're all challenges that we need to face. Probably, about four out of ten people who are admitted to hospital don't actually need to be in hospital if we could provide the care they need closer to where they are. So there's a challenge. Um, about a thousand people in Kent and Medway each day are said to be in hospital when they're medically better and medically ready to go home, but because of social care needs or, or, or something else that's, that's not quite in place, they can't get out of hospital. People who sit in hospital lose muscle strength become weaker. Um, how many times have I as a GP had people saying, gosh, I was doing so much in hospital and now I can't do it when I get home? Um, because inevitably in hospital, you're a bit inactive, you start to lose muscle mass, you start to lose strength. Um, so, so keeping people out of hospital um, is a good thing. It's a good thing to be in hospital when you need to, but being out of hospital when you don't need to be there is a good thing. Um, we're having trouble recruiting enough GPs. We're having trouble recruiting enough practice nurses. Um, there are lots of other colleagues in primary care who are equally important, but the people you recognise and the people that form the bedrock of, of my general practice are, are my GP partners, GP doctors, and my practice nurses. So the plan. Um, most, pe most people here who've got long-term conditions, you only see um, the, a, a doctor or a nurse for an hour or two a year. Hopefully not for any longer because you don't end up in hospital and you're not definitely unwell it. But for the rest of the time, you're looking after yourself. You're taking care of yourself. Um, so how can we make sure that works as well as possible? That you've got all the resources and all the information and all the medicines and all the skills that you need. The first point of call, and, and that's what I'm here to talk about, the 90 odd percent of NHS contacts that happen every day that don't go anywhere near a hospital. So how can we make the 90 odd percent of contacts as good as possible, as effective and as efficient as possible, that get the answers, that get the services that you need and you want. And then there are times when sadly people do have to go into hospital. And I don't mean sadly because hospitals are bad places, but sadly because you're ill enough to need to go into hospital. So how can we make that as safe as possible? Um, so we have been listening, and I know currently there's a lot in the news, isn't there, about public body is not listening to people. And I know I'm making you listen to me at the moment, um, which I apologise and I should be quick because I should be getting the eye from Simon Perks in a minute. Um, but we want to hear, we want to listen, we want to know what's important from a broad range of the public and from a broad range of opinions. And we need to listen and, and understand what it is that you want from your NHS. What we have done and what the communication people from the STP have done is, is ask what do you want from local care? This is a survey, there's, nothing, there's no questions were asked about hospital here at all, which is why hospitals don't figure any of these answers. That's, that's not because people don't think they're important, but because people were asked about, 
but now it gets called local care, which means everything that goes on outside of, of, of your district general hospital, your specialist hospital, all the stuff that happens in community hospitals and the GPs and the community nurses and the pharmacists and everywhere else, the mental health services. And what people are wanting, um, and I hear this, I, you know, I, at reasonable time, I, you know, I have a listening event every 10 minutes in general practice where people came in, come and tell me not only their health worries, but also their worries about the service and what they'd like from the service. So what this just chimes with what I'm hearing in my practice, more end of life care and more dementia care. People wanting more support with healthy lifestyles. It's all very well you telling me to go on a healthy lifestyle, Doc, but actually how do I do that? How does it work? Health and social care working together. What a good idea. Um, we, need, we need to make that happen. Politicians and people who run services need to, need to make it so that the people on the ground who actually want this, who are providing the care for you, want to be able to work together. More services alongside GPs. Um, there is a kind of Dr. Kildare version that says the GP did everything. That isn't true anymore. That isn't. I, I'm going to shake up the head from Judith over there as a nurse. Who knows very well there's lots of things that you shouldn't allow within a million miles of a GP. But you get a nurse to do it, or we get a pharmacist to do it, or we get a physio to do it, or we get somebody else to organise it. But, but within a kind of GP setting, so it's easier for you to access. Which goes with more services and more care in or, or, or at least near your homes. And, and not, not, not just in Margate or Canterbury or Ashford, but in Herne Bay, in Broadstairs, in Faversham, in Folkestone, out on Ronnie Marsh, wherever it is. So more services there. More support for carers, family carers. Huge, huge, huge challenge there. And a huge amount of the care goes on um, from family members. And I've had um, my mum and dad both have dementia. And I know the, the stress that that puts on, on families. Uh, to see the same person regularly. And if you can't see the same person regularly, one of the things that I've, I, that I've had of initiative chest disease. So, so one of the questions that we asked years ago, um, the Breathe Easy group, was if you can't see the person you see, what about seeing somebody who's trusted by the person that you normally see? And people were quite happy and quite confident with that. If they can get hold of the information, it goes back to uh, services working alongside GPs. Faster and easier appointments. Um, if I hear somebody say, one more time, it's easier to get an appointment with the Pope than it is with me, um, I will retire happy if you give me a pound. It is terrible that, it, that that's true. Um, so how do we make sure that you get appointments with the people that you need? Yeah, your worries, uh, and this is a constant and regular important worry, having to travel further for care, or having to travel further to see your loved ones who are being cared for. So how can we kind of square that? Are there enough staff around? I've already said there's not enough GPs, something like 250 GPs short across Kent and Medway. That's not just a good, not around Canterbury, um, just, um, but 250 GPs short. Uh, you know, why, why is that? It's a national picture, but what can we do about that? Um, mental health services. Um, what's imperative esteem for mental health services? One in four people with mental health problems in Kent and Medway. How can we look after you? How can we provide you the services that you want? Social care services, should we not be working together? Should we not be getting care that's, that, that, that's better than people having to nip in for five, ten minutes and then nip out again? Um, how, how can we really do that? How can we sustainably do that? Um, and it comes to funding as well. This sort of slide, um, I'm going to slip over because it always gives me a headache to look at this sort of thing. But my, um, my, my understanding of this is, you, is, is this needs to be a health service that's, that's uh, circle around you, that's providing for you. How do we do that for you individually, but also for the person sitting next to you on the table and sitting next to you and in the next village and in the next town and in the next city? How, how can we make this real? Um, so care that's not provided in the main hospital, what are we aiming to do? We're trying to stop you getting ill enough to need to go into hospital, to stop you getting ill enough to have these flare-ups, these uh, emergency events. <coughs> We're trying to deliver care that's closer to home. You don't always have to go to hospital for an outpatient appointment. You should be able to see a physio quite easily. Um, your specialist nurses should be there and be, uh, and, and be able to care for you and have access 
to your GP and your GP notes and to your practice nurse and to your practice physio. So can I hand over to Mike to get a brief, brief respite from me? Good morning. And um, Simon, I hope I don't uh, interrupt your flow too much. Uh, my name is Michael Thomas Sam and uh, I work for Ken County Council. Uh, just to say that uh, when we talk about health and social care uh, integration, it's important to actually uh, balance uh, what we hear from uh, health colleagues uh, to that of the local authority. Uh, and the changes that is going on within social care is very much uh, in line with both the uh, aims uh, and the uh, vision uh, that Simon has just talked about. By that I mean uh, how we need to uh, join up services more, how we need to integrate in terms of um, assessment and how we commission services are for individuals. Over the last year, um, the uh, local authority, KCC, we've been uh, developing uh, a new vision and strategy. Um, and that has changed uh, the, our approach to social care. It means that we are focused on three principal areas. First and foremost is about ensuring how we we'll work with uh, community and voluntary sector organisations to be able to provide uh, better, improved preventative care uh, about early self-help uh, and early health. It's uh, a regrettable fact that today people still struggle with actually getting timely and quality uh, information about what is available, what they're entitled to, where they tend to. So being able to provide uh, accurate and uh, clear information and advice is very important. It means that uh, we are having to focus more on individuals' well-being. We often talk about choice and control, actually emphasising and being able to identify what matters to people and being able to work with them to help them achieve that. So that's one area of what we're focusing on. The other area is about thinking about individuals that after illness or a spell in hospital can actually have the support from uh, a short-term intervention such as uh, enablement services and rehabilitation. And uh, around uh, the short-term support, there's actually an awful lot that happens uh, that's been done by both health and social services that will come together around uh, that concept of uh, services around the individual so that we coordinate uh, how we deliver services. Clearly, some people will go on to uh, require long-term ongoing care. And so the third strand of our approach is actually how we bring together more to disciplinary teams to support individuals either in their own home or in a care home who needs ongoing care. And that means that to be able to draw on specialists, uh, occupational therapists, or other uh, professionals, uh, whether uh, an individual has got a mental health uh, need or dementia or some other type of need, so that we're able to provide that much more join up services. A key part of what we're trying to do now is simply ensuring that uh, providers a lot of what local authorities do, we do through uh, private, voluntary and independent providers. Now without them, we will not be able to actually deliver what the local authority is responsible for statutory. So it's about working with providers, uh, ensuring that A, their staff are better trained, ensuring that we've got the right incentives in place. Actually, a lot of the time is the uh, relationship between the person working for the uh, care agency and the individual receiving the services, that matters most. And trying to work out a way where we can actually ensure that that relationship uh, works for the individual. So these are the three key uh, areas that our approach, our new approach, is focusing on. Clearly, when people uh, need to go into hospital and they're about to come out of hospital, that is where working together as part of a joint discharge planning team uh, um, has to work as a bring the It's about looking into how we can actually uh, complete assessment for individuals in their own home. It's about helping uh, 
using different approaches such as home to um, uh, assess uh, and uh, ensuring that uh, the discharge that we have in place is faster, efficient and get, gets people at home uh, to be able to live independently. Um, and at the core of it is to say that uh, when you look at the key strands of the uh, SDP local care, uh, the social services model fits very well into that. So that's all I want to say at the moment. So Simon, uh, back to you. So there are people that you will become increasingly familiar with over the, um, over the next year or so, uh, because we all like stories and we all like stories about people. Um, and I'm, saying, I'm a GP, lots of abstract stuff and abstract management stuff I, I, I can't follow, but I can follow it meant about people. And so Dorothy is somebody that you will come to know the more of these events that you come along to. Um, and we all know Dorothy. She's a lady who's got COPD, she's got some heart disease, she's got a bit of depression, and a little bit of, of early dementia. Um, and we all know her. I, I see her regularly in my surgery. Blimey. So, <laughs> if I start to crouch down, I'm not hiding. I'm just trying to keep up with the microphone. Um, so currently, people who know Dorothy will know that her care is a bit inconsistent and it overlaps and she has to tell her story so many times because a new doctor, a new nurse, a new physio, a new carer comes along and needs to know. Lots of professionals say, what's the matter with Dorothy? And we make plans for her on the basis of what we think is the matter with her. We don't ask what matters to Dorothy. Because there are so many bits and pieces there, some people struggle to assess Dorothy, to say where does her heart fit with her depression, fit with her lungs, fit with whatever, whatever else might go, a bit of arthritis, where does all that fit? It focuses on our health needs as though some people, as though we as people, are just a collection of the symptoms that we provide. And actually most of the time, our health is not our biggest concern. It's what about our family? What about our friends? What about what else we're doing? So there are lots of other things that go to make our decisions about, for us individually, other than our health. And actually, she only sees a specialist when she visits a hospital. So that really special top-notch treatment, and top-notch um, decisions and thoughts about specific individual um, conditions that she's got are only, oh, are only accessible by going to a hospital. So what do we want to do? We want to change it so that things are well organised, that Dorothy has some say in what's important to her. Her blood pressure numbers may be less important to her than whether she can see her son next weekend and whether she's got, you know, how many, how many of you, patients come in and say, I'll say, can I get you in for an appointment? And they'll say, let me have a look at my diary, doc, I need to see any other appointments I've got. Um, can I actually come in to the hospital in the morning and get an x-ray in the afternoon and I've got to go and see the nurses next Friday and when can I fit you in? Um, so make us simple to access, make it focused on her. When she needs expert advice, let's get it without actually having to go to a hospital. So what we'd like to, what we'd like to see, or what Dorothy, I'm sure, would like to see for herself, is that the care is organised, that actually she can get hold of her test results, she can get hold of, of that bit of advice when she needs it. When she goes into hospital, when she's in the hospital, let's get her home as soon as possible. That's where she wants to be. None of us want to spend time in hospital. Again, not because they're bad places, but because it's not the sort of place we choose to be. If we're going to go on holiday, I'd go somewhere else in the hospital. Um, one number to call so that you can get hold of the people that you want to. There are single point of access numbers. I think the last count was about 40 or 50 of them, which kind of doesn't sound like a single point of access for me. Um, let's get everything in one team. Let's keep her safe. Make sure home is a safe place to be. Let's make sure she can stay at home. So what, what, what are we doing? What, we're looking to change the way we deal with our local care. There's a lot of stuff that's gone on through the Encompass um, organisation across Canterbury. Looking to get a GP practice on the Canterbury site. Looking to get GPs available Saturday and Sunday. 
women in catheter clinics, so you can go somewhere for that expert advice and care that's not about going to the hospital. And look out over the, over the rest of the year for new ways of delivering primary care in Whistable and in Herne Bay and across the rest of Canterbury. So more self-care, but with better tools, information and access to services. Connected care that's health and social services. Um, more treatment locally and hopefully meaning less hospital visits and less time in hospital. So if I can pass over.